everyone, welcome back, it's Biggs. Now today, I'm gonna to show you a quick, simple, cost-effective DIY method of making nice natural backgrounds for all your custom Bavarians. So let's get to it. fascinated as I am by the incredible diversity of life that surrounds us in our wonderful and sometimes bizarre natural world, then you belong here with me. I make videos on all facets of nature, from aquariums and vivariums, DIY projects, reptiles, isopods, insects and arachnids, all sorts of unique plants, and I try to dig a little bit deeper into the science behind it all. So if you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button as well as ringing that notification bell, and you'll always be kept up to date when I upload new content. Now the room is coming together pretty fast and furious, and there's lots of little things that have to happen beforehand, all those little details. Now the rack you see before you, this is the rack that's gonna house a lot of those 12 by 12 inch cubes, such as these two, for holding uh, some of the large female tarantulas. And then on top, it's gonna house two of the ones similar to that, similar to the one that that big Indian ornamental is in. Now, I have six of these ready to go. I actually have about a dozen of them, but I have six of them that are ready to go. But I, one thing that's missing is I'm missing backgrounds on all of them. And I'm a fan of the real natural backgrounds as I've shown you. I've shown you the method where we've taken the styrofoam and uh, that comes with the vivariums and we've turned them into these natural looking ones. So this one here, you can see the definition that's behind there of this one. This one before it was actually made into that looked exactly like this. It's just a piece of styrofoam. We had to cut off the channels as I've shown you in another video. And we did the, the, the mixture of the soil and the silicone and it makes for a nice natural looking background and plants can adhere to it. You know, it looks good with the piece of oak branch that's in there. And I have some pretty cool plants for that vivarium what's gonna go up on that shelf. Now, the other thing that I've shown you guys is how to, these ones are a bit more complicated to make because you have to make them to fit, but this is using an actual natural piece of oak, you know, such as something like this, just taken right off the tree. This one was actually cut to be able to use to try and build, uh, try and use it in a vivarium and it didn't end up working, but I could still use this for things like isopods and stuff, so forth. Now the other thing that we often use, and we can use, is using natural cork. The only problem with a lot of the cork is it often comes when it's fairly round. So if I ended up using this as a background, I would probably lose that giant void in the back. I'd have to fill it with something so the tarantulas and so forth don't go and find a way to hide in behind it. But otherwise, something like that gives a gorgeous background. So I have another alternative. And because we have a bunch of them, and conveniently they are 12 by 12 by 12. That's exterior dimensions or outside dimensions. A three, two will go there, and then two will go on the bottom shelf. The two top ones, they're already done because I've already shown you guys those. One's got that, and then the one on the inner your ornamental has actually a full natural oak background. Now, I'm thinking down the road. We have some other plans in the works right now. As, as I thought originally, I thought, you know, that's a little bit spacious for the Indian ornamental, a giant cage like this. And as you've seen in her cage, well, better yet, let's go take a peek. All right, well, here's the chaos of my average work desk. I'm working on papers dealing with venomous snakes. I'm planning new builds. I've got camera equipment and stuff. Stuff is just piled everywhere for all the things. But what sits right beside me on a daily basis is the vivarium that was built for the Indian ornamental. And she is sitting right down there at the bottom. Now, the reality is that she does not use... She doesn't really, honestly, she doesn't really venture much past that wall. You know, so that's her little hide there. And then she also goes up and she's made her webbing here. And the only thing she really uses the rest of the cage for, as you can see on the front glass, is her personal toilet. So she does go out and hunt. But I think because, she, you know, the female, she doesn't really need to explore a lot. I think the idea, I'm going to take this vivarium this one back and the one that's beside it that I showed you and we're going to do something different with those and I'm going to put her in that little that smaller one that's that 8 by 8 by 12 that had that oak background. Yeah I think she's going to do absolutely great in one of these enclosures. Now when you look at the size of it you know she's she's about the length of my hand but she's not as big as my hand so when we look at the size of that I think that is going to be more than adequate for her and I think most tarantula keepers would probably agree. Now I have I think I have about eight of these enclosures. And once the room is all said and done, I have one wall behind me that has about a five foot space. It originally was planned below the window for where my desk was gonna go. 
But uh, I'm going to have to build some different vivariums for there and a couple of different smaller aquarium projects that are going to go there as well. So I think I'll line in the, the eight or a dozen or whatever I have of these in a nice row or two and get them all up set up there as well. Now, I like all sorts of variety. I like sort of exploring different natural techniques and stuff. Now, the, I, I'm fine with the styrofoam ones and doing the silicone and doing those type of backgrounds. But as I've seen over the years with some keepers, that eventually if the animal works at it, eventually it exposes the styrofoam. And once they expose the styrofoam, particularly like the males and stuff, they use, some of them can use their hooks and they can dig it through and all of a sudden now you have a bit of a mess. It's easy to redo, it's easy to fix, but it is just something down the road. Now with the solid cork back, or orc, oak or cork backgrounds, you would never have that. And all I use is a bit of that expanding foam around the edges, and that's what you can see down there is that yellow down there. Now, because time is a bit more of a constraint, I thought of some another idea, and it came about because I was doing some decorating and helping my daughter upstairs in her room. And one thing she wanted is she wanted a cork board. So we ordered a bunch of packages of these. They were just off Amazon, they weren't expensive, I think they were about $15, $17 a pack, and they come in a package of four, and that's what they look like. They're nice, natural, dark cork. They're half an inch thick. And the convenient thing is this entire pack for, say, 15 bucks, well, divide 15 bucks in half, that's seven and a half. You know, all of a sudden divide it down even further. That makes for a real cheap background because one package of four will do four of those. So for only a few dollars, I can get a nice, natural background. Now the only thing that we do have to do is because the dimensions on the tiles are 12 by 12, that's the outside dimensions, I want to put these inside the vivariums. So we're going to have to go and do a little bit of craft work. I've got my cutting board out and uh, we're going to go and uh, measure the insides of the vivariums and we'll probably have to cut a little strip off either side. And then we're just going to have to tack them in with a couple of little dabs of silicone and we have some beautiful backgrounds. But the nice thing is they're completely flat. Not only are they completely flat, they're completely natural. They'll blend in really, really well. You could scratch up the surface so you know it doesn't look as, as perfectly smooth as does a corkboard looks. But uh, you could scratch up the surface uh, a fair bit and that'll give it a bit more of a natural texture once it's already applied to it. And then you'll add in the other natural textures like I can add in cork bark to it. I can add uh, you know cork bark rounds. I can add oak to it, leaf litter, different types of branches and so forth. And that'll make a beautiful vivarium. And it gives each one of them natural look depending on the needs of individual species. So let's get started. So for the job, we're going to need a good quality tape measure. We need a good square and we need a, knife, a razor knife. But I put a brand new blade in the razor knife. So we have to be extremely careful because this is a, it's a razor. It's extremely sharp. So always be safe. And we're using my cutting board. This is a special cutting board I use in one of the crafting rooms. for the height. for the width. Now you can see it fits nice and snug. As if it was tailor-made. 
And the other advantage is it also covers up the these holes, which would generally be used for electrical for, they give you different purposes. Now the screen lid's gonna cover most of that stuff anyways, but these little tiny little things, I don't use those for doing tarantulas and so forth. So the fact that they're covered up gives one more area of, less area of escape for say a cricket, if a cricket were to climb up and try to crawl out there. So we're just gonna give it a couple of dabs of silicone and this one is done. That's a great, nice, natural texture for a background. All the different natural earth tones. That'll look great against a nice, loose, loamy soil mix, as well as any sort of wood products or plants we put in these vivariums with them. And the background will just disappear. So there you have it. A nice, economical, natural background for your aquarium. Get away from those cheesy styrofoam ones. It was less work. And honestly, it costs less than $4 per terrarium. That's a thing I can live with. So as always, my friends, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, share it, give it a thumbs up, maybe give me a comment. And I appreciate you all. We'll see you next time. Take care.